Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel if you're new here. I'm Ollie and this is Turner's Workshop and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the MIG 180 MIG welding machine made by Artec. I'd like to say thank you to Artec for sponsoring this video. I want to be completely transparent with you guys, they did give me this machine at a discounted price for making this video and I also asked if you could get a discount so if you want to buy anything from Artec's website you can use the code TURNER at checkout and you'll get 7.5% off any of their products if you want welding supplies um, or a new machine. In today's video we're going to be unboxing the MIG 180. I'll show you what you get in the box. We can set the machine up and then try it out. And I'm going to do a comparison between the welding machine I've been using over the past couple of years and why this machine is that much better. And also, I'd like to say that Artec offer a free year, free warranty on all of their welding machines. So if you have any problems within three years, they'll come to your door, pick your machine up. I guess they take it back and repair it. They might even offer you a machine in the meantime and then return it to you. I think that speaks volumes in itself. If a company can offer a free year, free warranty on any of their machines, they must believe that the machines are that well made that they're not going to go wrong within three years. I think it's worth mentioning just how well packaged it is. You've got these handles on the side, so you'd assume that this is the top, I'd say. So here we've got a delivery note of everything we should have in the box. That's actually a lot lighter than I expected. instructions. And let's take this box out and see what we've got in here. This should have our torch in it. Uh, this is our promotion banner, lovely. We've got a cap, t-shirt, let's get Miggy with it, awesome, and a nice mug. So here we've got our two gauge argon regulator, single stage. We've got our gas supply hose, our Euro style MIG welding torch. So this will fit any welding machine that's got the Euro connector. So it's like a good quality. Uh, an optional extra that I wanted was the MMA lead. So that's for doing stick welding. It's heavy lead, good quality. Again, nice and thick cable. And then we've got our earth cable and earth clamp. It's a nice moulded plug there, heavy, good quality. The clamp's nice, it's got a firm spring in there, so it should grip onto your metal nicely, not slip off. I bought my machine with a 13 amp standard three pin plug, but you can get it with a 16 amp plug as well if you've got a supply for that. We've got our banner up, Artec cap on, Artec t-shirt. We've got the mug 180 with a nice brew. Let's have a look at the MIG 180. Or should I say, let's get MIGI with it. When you first get your welding machine, you're gonna wanna put your plug on there, whether you get the 16 amp plug or the 13 amp, that's the first job. So. That's our earth connected to the top pin. We then have our blue on the left and our brown on the right. And I remember that because blue is spelt B-L and brown is spelt B-R. So B-L being on the left, B-R being on the right. There, about there. Once you've got all your wires connected in there, blue on the left, brown on the right and earth at the top, you wanna tighten this down so it clamps onto the cable insulation. Let's tighten that up. So that's squeezed down on there. So now if you accidentally drag the machine for whatever reason, it's not gonna pull your connections out of the plug. It's just gonna pull the cable. And that's it. Let's put the cover on. And we 
we're good to go. I'm just going to spend a minute familiarising myself with the instructions. We've got the technical specifications, a section on safety precautions, connecting to a generator. So you can use this for mobile welding, but you've got to have a generator with at least a 6 kVA output continuous, and it's got to have an automatic voltage regulator so you don't damage your machine. Connections for the MiG-180. Got nice pictures there, it's all labelled up. Controls and settings section. I'll go through all this in the video. Wire spool fitment and changing the polarity for gasless welding or using flux cord wire. And then we've got this good section here for welding settings. It's got all the knob adjustments there for different joints, for different thicknesses of steel, which gas you're supposed to use. And we've got another section here as well for 0.8 mil welding wire and that's for 0.6 mil diameter. And then we've got a section for MMA welding, troubleshooting the machine. And then of course you've got that great customer service if you ever have any problems. Let's do a quick comparison between the MiG-180 and my old welding machine and talk about the reasons why I wanted to upgrade to this machine. So first of all, it's to do with the voltage control. With the MiG-180, you've got infinite control of the voltage as it's on a potentiometer. Whereas with my old welding machine, it's on a switch. So you've only got six settings for the voltage. And sometimes you can't quite get the setting you're looking for depending on what you're welding. The next reason is this has got a Euro torch connection and this one hasn't. If the welding torch is built into the machine like this one, if ever you've got any problems with your welding torch and it's not feeding the wire properly, then it's pretty much a write-off and you've got to get rid of the machine. Whereas if you have a problem with this one, you can just get a new welding torch um, and it just connect onto this. Alternatively, you could fit this machine with a Euro connection, but by the time you've done that and spent the money on this machine, is it worth it? As the name suggests, the MiG-180 has got a maximum output current of 180 amps at a 35% duty cycle and 150 amps at a 60% duty cycle. My old machine had a maximum output of 135 amps at a 10% duty cycle, so it's much smaller. Um, you can weld thicker materials for a longer period of time with the MiG-180. This has got IGBT written on the front of it, and that's to do with the inverter technology that's inside this. It uses insulated gate bipolar transistors, which is a much cleaner method of switching in an inverter than using MOSFETs, which is an older technology. So you should get much cleaner welds using this machine. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a great beginner welder, and I don't want to knock it too much because it's been really good to me over the past couple of years, and it saved me an absolute fortune in welding repairs on my van by welding it up myself. But given the chance again, if I was choosing a beginner welder and something that's going to last me, a longer period of time so you don't have to do this upgrade process like I'm doing, I would have gone straight for this machine. It's got a bit more output current, it's more refined, so hopefully our welds are going to be much cleaner and you've got the capability of doing stick welding, you can do aluminium with a spool gun, you can't do that with this one. If you feel the weight of the machines, this is actually much lighter and it's got a higher output current. Um, need I say any more. The wire feed mechanism on a MIG welder is a really important part because this is what feeds the wire through to the torch at the set speed. And you can see with the MIG 180 we've got lots of metal components here. It's nice and robust, well made. Now I'm going to be using 0.6 mil wire. So if we take this off, this is our drive roller. We've got two grooves in here for 0.8 mil and 0.6. I'm gonna be using 0.6, so that side. So I'm gonna put the 0.6 in line with the wire feed channel. Let's screw that on. With a Euro style torch connection like this, it looks like you've got four holes. Two of these are actually electrical connections for the switch on the gun. 
This bigger one is where the MIG wire feeds through and the smaller one is where your shielding gas comes out. Let's connect our torch up. So this piece goes in the bigger hole and then you just screw this on to secure it to the machine. Let's open this up and I'm going to show you how to install the MIG wire. Take this off. Take the packaging off. Put it on the machine. Up there. You get this piece to hold it in place. A spring puts a bit of pressure on it that allows it to come off the spool easily. And you just screw that on there, like that. You've got to be really careful at this point because when you take this wire out of the clip, it's going to want to unravel itself. So let's take the MIG wire off the roll, have a firm grip of it. Okay. I'm going to cut the end so it feeds through the mechanism nicely. Now once you've got the wire through here and it's in the drive roller, you want to lock it down like that, lock it into place. Now when we turn the machine on, we can drive the roller and it should feed the wire through the gun. It's on the lowest wire speed setting, so let's turn that up a little bit and then you can see the drive roller here is feeding the wire through the mechanism and into the gun. Because we're using 0.6mm MIG wire, we need to change the contact tip to a 0.61. So you just unscrew this and put on a 0.6 contact tip. And that's what this tool is for. If you want to nip it up a little bit, you can. Uh, there. Just to tighten it on there and then put your gas shroud on the torch we've got our voltage adjustment here a wire speed this is the current control if you're doing mma or stick welding and this is a switch for changing between mig and stick and then this is for the spool gun attachment for welding aluminium we've got three lights power over temperature and a warning light if you're going to use this machine with flux cord wire, you can also change the polarity up here. You just change this over, you move the cable across to the negative. Let's connect up our gas supply to the MIG welder and that just screws onto the back of the machine. And then this is going to connect onto our regulator. I've just got an adjustable spanner. Let's just nip that onto the bottle. And then we connect our hose onto this one here. They're just standard threads, so righty tighty lefty loosey. And the reason you need a regulator is because the gas pressure inside the bottle is much higher than is required by the welder. So the gas inside this bottle is about two and a half thousand PSI but we only need about eight PSI for the welding machine. And the same on the back of the machine, just give it a little nip up. I tend to use my MIG welding machine for vehicle repairs mainly, on the chassis and the bodywork, so I'm not gonna be welding really thick steel, and that's why I've gone for a 5% argon mix for the shielding gas. It's 95% argon and 5% CO2. And that's good for welding mild steel up to around 7 mil. This is a 10 litre bottle. You can get bigger bottles, which is more cost effective if you've got the space to store it. But because I'm a hobby welder and I do this at home, I've got a smaller bottle. Um, you can also get very small 
disposable ones, but again, that's going to cost you quite a lot in the long run. This was £110, uh, £55 deposit for the bottle, which is refundable at any time, and it's £55 for a refill, so it's not too bad. Make sure the regulator's unwound so no gas is going to flow through, and then we're going to see what pressure we've got in the gas bottle. So this is the pressure inside the gas bottle, and this is the output uh, flow rate, litres per minute. So we've got in here over 2,500 PSI. So now we need to set the flow rate. We're going to turn our MIG welder machine on. And then I'm going to wind this in and push the trigger. And you should get a bit of gas come out the end. Can you hear that? I'm going to wind this in. And I think I'm going to set it to about eight litres per minute to start with. I think it should be at about 10, something around that, maybe a bit more. We'll leave it at that for now. We're nearly ready to start welding. We've just got to connect up our negative lead or our ground into the negative terminal. Screw that in there. We've had a good look at this machine and I've showed you how to set it up. And now I just want to touch on a few safety precautions before we start welding. When you're welding, the arc is very bright, so you need to make sure you wear a suitable welding mask. This is my welding mask, it's made by Tap Life. It's auto dimming, so when you start welding it dims and then when you stop you can then see what you're doing again. Make sure you wear eye protection when you're preparing your metal and using a grinder so you don't get swarf in your eye. I've had it before with swarf in my eye. I had to go up to the hospital and they removed it using a needle. It wasn't a nice experience and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. So avoid that. My grinder is very noisy, so wear ear protection and obviously you have lots of sparks from grinding metal as well. So if you've got any flammable liquids around you, just make sure you cover them up or put them somewhere where they're safe. Now I know I'm probably stating the obvious, but Welding produces a lot of heat, so make sure you handle the material with gloves. Wear gloves, cover your skin up. It also produces a lot of UV radiation, so you can get sunburn from welding. So cover your skin up um, and be careful of molten drops of metal. The splatter goes everywhere, so just be careful. You don't want that falling in your belly button because it's not very nice. Certain materials that you weld are going to produce uh, harmful gases, like galvanised steel. So just be careful what you're welding and make sure you grind off any coatings um, before you start welding them and just be aware of what you're welding and work in a well ventilated space. With your gas bottle make sure you secure it to your welding bench or if you've got a trolley make sure it's fixed in to your trolley. I'm actually going to make a trolley in the next video I think for my welding machine and gas bottle. Uh, you can buy them but what's the fun in that we might as well try and make one. But yeah, you just want to make sure that your bottle is nicely secured because if it falls over and the regulator smashes off, you're going to have a missile going around your workshop. I think lastly, but certainly not least, don't weld in the rain. I know it's very tempting sometimes when you've got a job to finish outside, but it's really not worth it. I'm just referring to the manual here, and for welding 3mm carbon steel with 0.6mm wire, an argon mixed with 5% CO2. You have the voltage set to five, so that's halfway, and the wire speed is set to 10. So that's the maximum. So that's your setting for three mil carbon steel. Straight out of the box we're producing welds like this, not too bad, good penetration. And this is one mil mild steel plate and I'm just going to try and butt weld this together. I haven't cleaned it up, let's see how it deals with uh, with it like that. And that there. I 
I think that's going to be absolutely ideal for those delicate body panel repairs. And again, that's using the recommended settings out of the book. And we've got fairly good penetration down the center of this butt weld. Um, if I ground that off, it should be nice and clean. So ideal for doing bodywork repairs. For arc welding with the machine, you wanna get your electrode holder lead and put that into the positive terminal and screw it in. Flick it to MMA. Turn these down to zero. And then I'm gonna set this about halfway. Turn the machine on. And now we're ready to do a bit of stick welding. Now we're gonna get our electrode and put it in the holder and just unscrew it. Put that in there. This is just a general purpose electrode. It's a 6013. Let's have a bit of a practice with our Welding electrode. Got my slag hammer here. Nice. Good penetration. <laughs> This is going to be a very, very handy machine. It's not very pretty, but it's nice and strong. You can see you've got good penetration through here. I think it's safe to say I'm pleased with this purchase, and I'm really looking forward to using this machine in my upcoming projects. If you're interested to see what I get up to with this machine, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you click the little alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And feel free to share it with your friends if you think they might be interested. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Cheers guys, bye for now.